good afternoon. Thank you for joining us at the UBC TV Lunchtime News. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold, and we hope that you are enjoying yourself wherever we are, wherever you are, rather, as we inspire Uganda. Now, to start off our bulletin this afternoon, the Mafindi Army Barracks Health Center 4 has been commissioned and handed over to the UPDF, a Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs. The Minister of Energy and Mineral Development, Dr. Mary Goretti Kitutu, accompanied Colonel Charles Ngola and, and handed over the facility that is part of the corporate social responsibility under the construction of the 600 megawatt Kazuma Hydro power plant. These are the details. One and zero, a big hand clap. <laughs> the expansion of Masindi Ami Barak's Health Center 4 project, fully funded by Sino Hydro, will cater for about 2,500 patients, of whom 70% will be the local community and 30% army personnel. Uh, this uh, facility serves in the wrong highway where there are many accidents. So accidents and emergency are one of the critical areas which will be addressed. And without full diagnostic capacity, X-ray and radio imaging, plus laboratory, the blood bank, uh, you cannot do much. Ladies and gentlemen, this beautiful health facility will indeed not only benefit the UPDF and their families, but the entire Masindi community, uh, as has always been our policy of providing free medical services to the neighboring income communities. The $1.5 million project implemented by Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited will enable trained army medical staff offer services to residents of Masindi, Kiriandongo, and Nakasongola. In order to benefit the communities, that will be directly impacted by the construction of this electrical power infrastructure. The government of Uganda negotiated a corporate social responsibility component in the contract with Sino Hydro. The corporate social responsibility component would include the following two hospitals, and one of them is this, which I'm delivering today. So the surgical ward is here, then we have the theater, and that very important office called the mortuary, which is very feared, but very important. In the conceptualization of this project, uh, given there were two hospitals as part of the CSR project, uh, we felt one of the hospitals should go to the UPDF for the great service that they do for this country. Despite the tremendous work done by UPDF medical staff, the local community is still skeptical about the Army's intentions while administering health care. We have a war and we are going to have a big one. War does, does not involve bullets, missiles, no. But war of psychology. Our civilians have refused to accept that we use the same medicines. For them, they are saying the medicine we use is specifically made for soldiers. The best thing we could do, I'm uh, requesting the, the chief of medical services to let your uh, UPDF doctors and nurses maybe try bring in this uh, the, the nurses of uh, the community and the doctors of the community to sensitize them within our facilities maybe once a while so that they see how we operate in our health centers they see how we handle patients the commissioning of the health center is part of the corporate social responsibility program implemented by the 600 megawatts karuma hydropower plant management Charlotte Amoge and Robin Yoso for UBC News. Now, the Ntinda School of the Deaf has benefited from a corporate social responsibility initiative by Nakawa Vocational Training School. Now, the students of the college have, over the past three days, engaged in repairing and maintaining of infrastructure like gutters and cisterns, which need over urgent attention at the School of the Deaf. These are the details. Over the past three days, Nakawa Vocational Training College has engaged in a corporate social responsibility initiative that involved repairing and maintenance at Ntinda School of the Deaf. 
The drive's major aim was instilling skills of lifelong learning in fragile times and has benefited both parties. The learners have confidence that what they have done in Uganda School for the Deaf in Ntinda is working. So they are already brambas, they feel they are brambas now because they fixed it up and they have left it working. Uh, we are also trying to instill confidence in them on how to deal with society. They mainly engaged in plumbing activities like clearing blocked water gutters to enable water harvesting and also repaired broken down facilities like toilets among others. The tanks lacked water, water was not rising from the water main, so we did connections, we had to raise the water up, we did connections to raise the water up. We achieved a lot, like I've gained some skills, learning how to repair the washing basin, the storage systems, fixing gutters. A Dutch professor in lifelong learning, Jacquees Zillen, is impressed by this collaboration between Nakawa and Tinda School of the Deaf. The project of Nakawa Vocational College to involve and to work together with the School of the Deaf mm -hmm. is very important to uh, develop uh, human potential and to uh, include people with those special needs in vocational activities towards the labor market. Nakawa Vocational Training College Principal Fred Mwanga urged government to adopt the new curricula which he says will enable boost skills development. My message to government is, uh, uh, is to make sure that they implement the new curriculum because the new curriculum is empowering the students in institutions to get the basic skills. You know, some of these uh, uh, things can be done by the learners if they are empowered. Such a project for the two institutions will enable infrastructure development and craftsmanship while exposing learners to their scope of work while at school. The initiative is supported by UNESCO and aims at empowering learners with skills to engage in real-life projects with a sense of belonging. Now, movement in Chotera to Kasensero in Rakai district has been paralyzed following heavy flooding that cut off the road. The water is blocking the road around Kana Kanabuleme County and left residents with no transport connection apart from canoes. Now, some of the travelers to Kasensero from the Chotera uh, side who can't afford canoes, have, who can't actually rather afford canoes, have to swim through the, to cross to the next destination. How they do that? Let's take a look. Hey, come on, be your man, you gamba. Go come in, go on, daba. Hmm. Not because you come out, no, but not because I want to be with you. So where is you? Okay. Now, the Ministry of Education and Sports rolled out lower secondary dual curriculum last year where students from senior one to three are subjected to vocational training alongside their basic education. 15 secondary schools were selected to pilot the dual curriculum. Acting Director, Directorate of Industrial Training, Patrick Yakatonda, says that the exercise is part of skilling Uganda program. Let's take a look. 
Fifteen secondary schools countrywide were selected to pilot the dual curriculum by the Ministry of Education and Sports Mbogo Secondary in Uyukwe District, Namgongo Secondary in Wakiso and St. Joseph's SS Mbarara District are some of the model schools implementing the dual curriculum. Students who have trained for three years in electrical installation, motor vehicle mechanics, tailoring, bricklaying, Carpentry are undergoing the competence-based assessment by the Directorate of Industrial Training. Our assessment mainly here is for the ones who work. They get employment. Remember, around 700 seat for P7. By the time they reach senior four, around 300 seat for senior four. So where do the others go? Those others will be catered for under the new power secondary career. The headmaster, Namgongo Secondary and Vocational School, Awi Francis, says the imparted skills acquired by the students will help them to be self-sustaining at a tender age. That when they leave school, they are not going to sit down, but they will be able to, to find something to do, depending on the course that someone chose to do while at school. Students after school can have something to start up by themselves instead of looking for jobs. So here we try to create a job of creators rather than job seekers. The skills development programs will also give students alternatives after completing their studies. I'm very happy to be in Namgongo because I'm going to live with two certificates, vocation certificates and a level certificate. Offering motor vehicle mechanics isn't a tag of work, so I can do any, I can employ myself do my own work instead of being employed by any other person. The reason as to why I chose tailoring is because, like in future, I just want to be a what? Fashion, I, I want to be a fashion and designer. Furthermore, an orthopedic machine worth 100 Ugandan shillings has been procured by the Indian Women Association to help the Ministry of Health meet the demand for the much needed artificial limbs. The function to receive the machine was held at the Ministry of Health headquarters here in Kampala. Yes, at heart, probably the Africans want democracy. According to reports from Mulago National Referral Hospital, more than 20 people lose their limbs in road accidents weekly. Most victims of this road carnage are allegedly financially incapacitated, making it hard for them to acquire artificial limbs. It was against this backdrop that the Indian Women Association thought it humane to come to the rescue of such victims, but also extend a helping hand to the Ministry of Health. The association has now procured an orthopedic machine valued at 100 million shillings. I want to appreciate you for that kind heart of seeing the need and accept to donate this equipment to the government of Uganda. The teams at Molago have pledged to take good care of it, but also to ensure that people who don't have limbs get the services free. And I want to repeat that. When a person has already lost a limb, you must be aware that they don't have any other source of limb. Suban Vankage, chairperson of the Indian Women Association, says the procurement of this machine is part of her association's contribution to putting smiles back on faces of road accident victims. The minister requested me and uh, His Excellency to donate this uh, equipment uh, worth about 100 million and today we are here to donate the equipment. Also present at this function was the Indian High Commissioner to Uganda, His Excellency Ajay Kumar, who pledged his government's commitment to supporting Uganda's health sector in all aspects. Bilateral cooperation between India and uh, Uganda, uh, it, it encompasses all the areas but uh, Cooperation in the field of health is a specific uh, area and, uh, and uh, I'm very thankful to Minister for uh, whenever we have uh, some project in hand, 
Honorable Minister have been very prompt to arrange all the necessary approval on Ugandan side uh, and that's the way we could do many, many activities together. Uh, whether start, uh, of uh, sending consignments or medicine or uh, uh, donating Avatron radiotherapy machine or most recently the vaccine. Statistics from the Ministry of Health indicate that more than 100 people lose their limbs monthly in road accidents on Ugandan roads. Rukidi Edward Kijanangoma, UBC News. We will now take a short commercial break just to help us make some money. When we return, we'll be back with business news, so stay tuned. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we are not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. Experience a 100% Fuji speeds across Uganda with the Airtel Fuji Pocket Wi-Fi available at 123,000 shillings. Only it comes with a backup battery and 15 GB free for one month. Visit the nearest Airtel shop, device selling shop or Airtel online shop. www.airtel.co.ug slash broadband dash discover. Airtel, the smartphone network. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field couldn't be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we are not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. Do business with Airtel. Register today as an authorized Airtel SIM selling agent free of charge. All you need to do is submit a business name and a passport size photograph of the owner, a passport size photograph of the handler, if applicable, a copy of a valid national ID of the owner, a copy of a valid national ID of the handler, if applicable, an LC or police letter confirming physical residential address of the owner, a certificate of incorporation or certificate of registration, a company tin issued by URA, if applicable, a certified copy of the form showing the registration location or place of business of the company, form 18, if applicable, a valid trading license, and an LC or police letter confirming the physical location of the business premises. Business premises should be a brick and mortar building. Verification of the submitted documents will take a maximum of three working days, still free of charge. Upon meeting all requirements, Airtel will provide training and customized branding material for your business location, still free of charge. You will be given a fingerprint scanner and a phone to enable customer SIM card registration, also free of charge. For registration inquiries, call us today on 100. Press 2 to know more. Airtel, the smartphone network. Airtel is regulated by Uganda Communications Commission.
Welcome back. You're still watching the UBC Lunchtime News broadcasting live from Nile Avenue. Also streaming on Facebook and YouTube under the name tag UBC TV Uganda. So do care to share the link and let them know we are informing the country. Now, in the world of business, Uganda Bureau of Standards has launched the Rebus National Consumer Price Index. The rebasing from 2009-2010 to 2016-2017 seeks to reflect the up-to-date consumption patterns of goods and services in the country. Now, this is in addition to helping government get the right estimate of inflation. Let's take a look. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics has disseminated the rebased National Consumer Price Index series with weight and prices referenced to the 2016-2017 from the 2009-2010 period. When a new item comes into the economy and is consumed, after this, its influence in price movements is not reflected in our compilation until when the next investment is undertaken. The Consumer Price Index is designed to measure change of the prices over time of the baskets of goods and services. Rebasing exercise involves updating of the household consumer basket, reviewing of the geographical coverage and other methodological aspects of the Consumer Price Index as per the recommended best practices. The SAT National Development Plan recognizes statistics as a public good and calls for collection, management, analysis and simulation of integrated, relevant, reliable and time statistical data and information for national development planning. It is globally recommended that countries rebase their consumer price index regularly. The process is aimed at reflecting the current debt consumption patterns of goods and services of the residents in the country. When you rebase, we are having the rate of change of the inflation figure lower than the rate of change of the inflation figures that we released using the old base of 2009-10. The implication is that the prices, it means that when you updated the consumption basket uh, towards a more recent period of 2016-17, the, the rate of the price change for 2016 are relatively lower compared to those uh, of 2009-10 base. The revised annual headline inflation for the year ended March 2021 is recorded at 2.7 percent. This is based on the rebased consumer price index. The 2016-2017 rebase is premised on the 2016 Uganda National Household Survey. Saddam Ubale and Dennis Sigoa for UBC Business, Kampala. Furthermore, African Development Bank intends to increase funding to the, the private African sector Development in Uganda after the entity absorbed 20 million U.S. dollar line credit. ADB's Regional Executive Director for East Africa, Mr. Amos Cheptu, reaffirms this partnership funding of projects through the Uganda Development Bank. That's UDB, just you know. The African Development Bank, ADB, is encouraging Uganda's private sector to utilize its credit facilities to improve on technology for efficiency, create jobs, and take advantage of the new African continental free trade area's huge market. So we are impressed by the turnaround that uh, the development bank in Uganda is doing because we have seen the results. It, we, we gave them uh, 20 million dollars and that they on lent to various uh, small, medium-sized enterprises. For this particular uh, uh, industry, they have given them two million directly from the from the resources that came from from the African Development Bank, and also they, they give them an additional three million dollars from their own resources. So in total, that's five million dollars on the on the same terms. Yeah. So that is a capital injection of five million dollars to the company, and uh, you can see the results. In a stride to support technology, ADB and UDB's joint private sector financing have injected $5 million U.S. million into Afroplast, a local firm engaged in import substitution of plastic products. Afroplast is one of our esteemed customers. 
we started lessons with them more than three years ago, where we extended them a loan facility of five million dollars. The client has made an appeal. Uh, they want to put another project. That project is basically to recycle plastics in the in the country. So that project is going to help us to clean the environment, and that project we are going to have a serious consideration for it. The head of ADB's regional operations in East Africa. Amos Shepto emphasizes that UDB will be a channel for financing more developments. Updates on the international scene. The Duke of Edinburgh's unwavering loyalty to the Queen, service to the national courage, service to the nation and courage, will be celebrated at his funeral. Prince Philip's association with the Royal Navy and love for the sea will be a focus of the Windsor Castle ceremony. But no someone will be delivered in line with his wishes. More than 730 members of the armed forces are taking part in the event, but there is a limit of 30 mourners at St. George's Chapel under the COVID rules. The ceremonial royal funeral will be broadcast on BBC One with coverage beginning from 12.30 BST. The service itself will be after a national minute silence at 1500 hours. Prince Philip died at Windsor Castle on Friday 9th April, aged 99, and his body is now resting in the private chapel at Windsor Castle before being moved to the state entrance. His coffin will be placed on a modified Land Rover that the Duke himself helped to design and carried in a procession the short distance to St. George's Chapel. Prince Philip's smile right there is very charming, almost makes you wish uh, he was still alive. Otherwise, I hope he rests in peace. And uh, that brings us to the end of our lunchtime news. Thank you for joining us. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold. Stay tuned for more news in our subsequent bulletin. Thank you.